Okay, um, we are not going to move on to the computational problems and um, just as I've said already, every one of these problems is exactly the same problem with just slight differences among them. And so the key is to identify all the similarities. And I know I've said this and I know you guys are trying to do this, but you have to draw that picture, you have to get your coordinate system, and you have to think about the drawing that you have just made. If you do that, the rest of your problem becomes really easy. Okay? So, and make sure you have everything on that drawing. So, what do we have? We have an uncharged metal ball. It's connected to a spring, not moving. A metal ball holding a charge Q is brought into contact and is held right there on the table. Assume both balls are point charges. What is the new equilibrium position of the ball on the end of the spring? That is, how far is its new rest resting place from its original resting place. All right, so that's the problem we have. So we are given a problem like this, and we have a ball, and we're going to go ahead and, um, well, I'll, I'll draw it way over here because I don't want to make this drawing twice. Um, I'm going to choose, where do I want to choose my coordinate system? Well, what forces am I, am I going to have here? I'm going to have a force that's related to the distance between these two balls, and I'm going to have a force that is related to the difference between the position here and <coughs> the position of this ball here and its eventual position. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and choose my coordinate system right here. Now remember, or my coordinate system origin. Remember, because these are point charges, this ball is actually taking up no space. So this position here would be the exact same position as this position right here. Same as the edge. So I'm just going to draw it like that. Okay. So, I bring this charge, it has a, excuse me, this ball, it has a charge Q, I bring it in contact with this. These are identical, they're conducting, which means that they are going to equally share this charge. So, that's what's going to happen here. Um, I'm just, for the, yeah, I'll just go ahead and, and write it. So, then what are we going to end up with? We're going to end up with Q over 2 and Q over 2. Okay. So now we've got those charges on each of these, and let's see, we are choosing, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose this direction to be my positive x direction. Yeah, yeah, why not? Okay, and remember that this is pinned in place, so this cannot move, and that's given in the problem. Okay, so now our question is, when, and I'm going to go ahead and draw a new version of this right up here. <coughs> but it's really just, it's just the exact same picture. I'm just moving it a little bit. So I've got this. And I've got that. And I've got this. But remember, this distance here doesn't mean anything. The distance from the ball to here because the, the ball has no dimension. So... So, what distance am I interested in finding out? I'm interested in finding out this distance right here. All right. So, there's my D, question mark. Um, and what do I know about this? I know that I'm going to have, I have charges involved, which means I'm going to have one force that is K, Q, 1, Q, 2 over D squared. Um... And, and let's go ahead and say, um, well, yeah, let's just go ahead and do this. We'll just say it's in the x hat. So this would be the force that um, Q2, darn it, that heater just came on. I hope it's not too distracting. Um, that Q2 exerts on Q1. So we are looking at the distance that uh, we're going in this direction, which is the plus x hat direction. Therefore, if Q1 and Q2 are negative, then we wait did I do that correctly let me think about this I'm going from here to here I'm exerting the force on that one and I am oh yeah yeah yep everything's great so if Q1 is the opposite sign of Q2 the force would be in the minus X direction Q1 and Q2 are the same, the force will be in the plus x direction. Okay, so everything's great there. This is what, what's the other force I have here? It's a spring. It has a spring constant. Let's go ahead and call this F 
equals minus alpha x, where x is the deviation from the resting position. Well, because I chose my coordinate system right here, what's my x? My x is the exact same as this distance d here. So I can just go ahead and replace that with d. So now I have everything I know here. I have what I'm looking for. What's what left? What's left to be done? What's my strategy? Well, I am looking for a new equilibrium position. That means the forces will be in balance. So I want F um, Coulomb and F spring. I want these to be equal to zero. Okay. So I'm going to have K Q1 Q2 over D squared equals minus F spring, which equals plus alpha D. All right. So what am I trying to solve for? I'm trying to solve for D. Then so all I have is K Q1 Q2 over Oh, excuse me, over nothing, uh, excuse me, over alpha, because I'm going to divide by alpha here, and this equals d cubed. Notice, look, everything here, as soon as you get this strategy, everything else is right there in the drawing. All you need to do is just execute your strategy now. You have every single thing you need. You've done it, okay? The work is done. Now you just kind of have to be careful, okay? So... We can set these two things equal, and now we're done. This is it. There's your answer. Um, since we're asked for the distance and not the distance cubed, we're going to do D equals the cube root of K Q1 Q2 over alpha. And we are going to go ahead and let's take advantage. Oh, I'm sorry. Cube root. Um, we are going to take advantage of the fact that this is... Um, that we know that Q1 and Q2 are both equal to Q over 2. So what we really have here is K Q squared over 4. I just did that all in one step. Alpha cube root equals D. And if we do this, um, whatever, well, well, K 9 times 10 to the 9th Q and um, Q is... 20 nanocoulombs, 2 times 10 to the minus 8, and this is Newton meter squared per coulomb squared times coulomb. So that takes care of um, the numerator, and, oh, I'm sorry, doesn't quite take care of the numerator because we need a 1 fourth here. So I have a 1 fourth, and I have an alpha, which is, yes, nice, 1 Newton per meter. Okay, one newton per meter is means this newton can cancel with this, and this meter is actually meters cubed, and um, and I did forget something very important here, which is this is q squared, not q. So it's coulomb squared, coulomb squared cancel. So this thing underneath this cube root sign is meters cubed, which means that the cube root of it is meters. All right, I apologize for the voice fading away. I'll drink some water in a minute. Um, so, once again, we're done. We're just doing, this is just a number. What do we have? We have four times, four times 10 to the minus 16, times nine, times 10 to the ninth, times one fourth over one. And so this is just, equals 9 times 10 to the minus 7. Does that look about right to you guys? Yeah. Um, meters cubed, which means I just have to take the cube root of this, which I don't remember what it is, so I'll go ahead and say... I'm going to go ahead and use my computer as my calculator here. Uh, da, da, da. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. So, I th this ends up being about equal to 
um, 9.7 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. And so this is about, um, about 1 centimeter. Okay? And where is it? Well, these are, these are, um, both positive charges, they're repelling. We looked at this right here. We know what we're doing with this d squared. We know we're moving in the exact direction that way. Therefore, sorry, I'm gonna. There we go. Okay. Um, so it, we know that it's it's uh, a centimeter over to this direction. Okay, done.